So we are here at the Mark train station in Maryland on our way to DC to go where Shay? To the National African American Museum. Yes, and we're taking you along with us. So come on, let's go. We decided to take the Mark train over to Washington DC, which was more convenient than driving. The reason why I'm whispering is because we were on a quiet car, which you cannot talk or use any type of mobile devices. It was a nice, relaxing ride on our way over to the museum. We arrived at Union Station for the next leg of our trip on Washington, D.C.'s Metro. We purchased our tickets and proceeded to catch the red line train that will take us to the museum. We arrived at our destination, which was only a few blocks down the street. And there she is, the museum. You can also see the Washington Monument. We got our tickets online, which were free to go into the museum. Upon entering the museum, you can scan to get an interactive map or you can get a physical one. And there's also storage lockers for you if you have large items. The museum starts in the lower levels and goes up to the top through time. So we decided to take the elevators down to begin our journey of the museum. So we are starting here at the bottom floor and then we are working our way up to the top. Yep. So the lower level starts your journey in the museum and it traces the origins of slavery from Europe and Africa. The museum also has an extensive selection of artifacts throughout the years, which was amazing to see in person. The museum also has interactive maps, which help you get a more detailed explanation of events. The museum did an excellent job of explaining each phase of slavery and its impact on the new world of America and on the enslaved people. To see these things in person was amazing. To see Nat Turner's actual writings was amazing. And to see an actual slave block, boy, I'm telling you, this is something you have to visit in person. To see actual artifacts, personal artifacts from Harriet Tubman was another enjoyable treat at the museum. There was even a display of a cabin, an actual cabin where enslaved people lived, the clothing that they wore in their everyday lives and other artifacts, including marbles that they used to play with during this phase. The museum also highlighted how industry was built on the backs of the enslaved people and how they were used during the Revolutionary War. The museum also went into the reconstruction period and the various black codes from different states, how the rise of the Ku Klux Klan affected the enslaved people, and also Plessy versus Ferguson, the separate but equal law during this time, the Jim Crow law era. There was even an actual segregated water fountain that we used during that time, and the museum highlighted some artifacts in Ida B. Wells' anti-lynching campaign. It was at this time that African Americans built their communities to engage socially with each other. There was a display of the Pullman Porters, the African American Pullman Porters of this time. And we also got a chance to go in and tour an actual first class segregated rail car, which was indeed eye opening. 
the museum highlighted the sit-in of Greensboro, North Carolina with the, one of the actual stools that was at the sit-in site. And the museum did an excellent job of the Greensboro lunch counter display, which was an interactive display where you could sit down, pull up a menu, and just touch on different points during this time in our history. The museum also did an excellent job highlighting the various nonviolent movements that were prevalent during this time. Including a dress worn by none other than Rosa Parks. The museum highlighted the 1965 Voting Rights Act, along with a display on Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice, and Brown versus Board of Education. The museum did an excellent job highlighting the segregated realities for African-Americans during this time period, including some of the artifacts from that time period, in addition to highlighting the writings of W.E.B. Du Bois, Ida B. Wells, my personal hero, and Booker T. Washington. The museum highlighted the Citizen Savings Bank, the first African-American bank in the United States, along with other financial accomplishments from African-Americans during this time period. They also highlighted African-American women's role during this time and had the display for the Lift Every Voice, the National Black Anthem. And the museum wouldn't be complete without a display of the 44th first African-American president of the United States, Barack Obama. You can also go in and share your story via video and recording to be included in the museum archives. The Contemplative Court is an award-winning sculpture that serves as a place for reflection and introspection upon visiting the many areas of the museum. Sweet Home Cafe is a restaurant in the museum offering down-home treats. We weren't able to go, it was crowded. Afrofuturism, the history of black futures, is currently on display in the museum until March of 2024. This exhibit demonstrates Afrofuturistic expression through art, music, theater, and more. The 4,300 foot exhibit space had various objects from Afrofuturism pioneers, such as Janelle Monet. The typewriter from Octavia Butler, this outfit from Nona Hendricks of LaBelle, outfits from Wesley Snipes and Regina King from The Watchmen on HBO, astronaut Mae Jameson, her outfit, uh, the outfit from Lieutenant O'Hara from Star Trek, and even Trayvon Martin's astronaut suit because he wanted to be an astronaut. The highlight of the exhibit was the actual outfit worn by Chadwick Boseman in Marvel's The Black Panther. Rest in peace, Chadwick. The museum has an extensive selection on African Americans and their contributions to dance, film, comedy, Broadway, you name it. They have actual outfits from some of your favorite television characters of black sitcoms, stand-up comedians, a separate cinema, which consists of Black Hollywood and also the Black exploitation era of the 1970s. Blacks and Broadway was also a great exhibit and it showed some of the actual items and also wardrobe from Paul Robeson and the West. I had the unfortunate opportunity, but eye-opening opportunity to take the brown paper bag test. If you know, you know. And of course, I did not pass, but this was but one of the many tests that we as African-Americans conducted on each other. The musical Crossroads celebrate the various musical abilities and genres that African-Americans played an important part in. Here's a Cadillac from Chuck Berry, various jazz artists with displays of their outfits, their musical instruments. It was just so eye-opening. I love this. There was even a Parliament Funkadelic spaceship it's small in person. The intricacy and the detail of each of these exhibits as we go through the various genres of music was just amazing. 
you know, it told a little bit backstory on different artists. Like I said, they had some of the outfits, they had some of the musical instruments. It was just really great. The museum hosts the series Neighborhood Music Store, where you could interactively go through and touch a genre of music that African Americans played a part in and listen to your favorite song. Last stop was the museum gift store, which had an array of items for you to take home for yourself or for others. We had a hard time trying to decide which ones we wanted. They even had a finger puppet of Barack Obama. It doesn't look like him though. They had an extensive selection of children's books by black authors. I'm starting my grandbaby's collections with these y'all. We hope you enjoyed the tour of this museum. Please come by and tour it. You won't regret it. Peace. Thank you.